So you've invested a bunch of money into a fancy camera, you took the time to learn how to use it, and you've taken that photo that you're super happy with and you're ready to show the world. You toss it up onto Instagram, and what does Instagram do? It takes that photo and it crushes it down into a lifeless, detail-lacking jumble of garbage pixels. And now you want to take your camera and throw it off a tower and take up knitting. Please don't do that. I can help you. What is up people, Donna here, and today we're gonna talk about how you can upload your beautiful photos to Instagram so that they still look beautiful when they get there. But first, what settings do you use to upload to Instagram? Have you found it makes a difference much? Leave a comment letting me know, and on your way down, hit that like button. There are a few simple guidelines that I follow when uploading to Instagram. One, try to crop to four x five vertical if possible. This takes up the most amount of real estate on people's screens when they're scrolling. If the photo makes absolutely no sense in this orientation or with this crop, it's okay to leave it how it is. It's much more important that you have a beautiful picture on people's feeds than it is to stick with this 4x5 guideline. Number two is to fit the photo within the Instagram specified sizes so that the Instagram compression machine doesn't have to do too much work to your photo. We'll talk about specifically what these numbers are in a bit. And number three, remember that no matter what you do, Instagram is still gonna take that file and put it through some kind of compression and rendering, and it's never gonna look quite as good as how it looked in your editor or on your camera roll. And that's okay, it's still gonna look really good. Okay, so let's talk specifics here. I'm gonna be showing you this in Adobe Lightroom, but no matter what photo editor you use, the numbers should all be the same and give you the same results. So we've got this shot of the beautiful Walterdale Bridge here in Edmonton, and I purposely took this in vertical orientation for Instagram. If you wanna see how I took or edited this photo, make sure to check out my previous videos. My first step is to crop to a four x five format. So I'm gonna choose my crop tool or hit R, and then I'm gonna select four x five under the aspect ratio, and then resize as I choose. If you're working with a horizontal photo, it'll default to the horizontal version of four x five, and you can rotate this easily easily by hitting X while on the crop overlay tool. Once you've done your crop and you're ready to export, let's go to file, export. I typically leave my export location selected as choose location later. This just allows me to choose the location at the end instead of at the start. Below that, you can rename the output file whatever you want. Let's say we want to add IG to the end of it so that we know it's our Instagram version. I'm going to choose file name from the drop down menu and then go back in and click edit and add underscore IG. This way if you're exporting multiple files, it'll keep the file name the same and add the suffix of IG to the end of all of them. Skipping down to the file settings, we're gonna choose JPEG for our image format and sRGB for our color space. Leave the quality at 100 and uncheck the file size limit box. This is where you'll see people often having different opinions, but I find that this works well for me. Under image sizing, we're gonna choose resize to fit and select short edge from the drop down menu and type in 1080 pixels. Right on the Instagram help site, they say that the maximum size that they'll accept without them having to scale it down a bunch is a width of 1080 pixels and a height of 1350 pixels. So if you do decide to upload a horizontal photo, make sure that the long edge is set to 1080 pixels. Any bigger and Instagram is gonna be scaling it down for you. I typically leave my resolution at 72 PPI, but it doesn't really matter because we're staying fully digital with this. I leave everything below this untouched and hit export. I choose my location and I wait a second while Lightroom exports. Now the last thing to remember in getting the photo to your phone to post is to make sure that you're using a method of file transfer that keeps the full quality file and doesn't try to compress it at all. I prefer to use AirDrop because I'm using all Apple products, but you can also use something like Google Drive or Dropbox to get it over as well. Alternatively, if you use an Instagram scheduling program like Planoly, you can directly upload from your computer. I'll leave a link in the description to Planoly if you want to check that out. So what do you think of these settings? Leave a comment below and let me know how you would do it. And on your way down, hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.